In this video series, we're going to cover header design, header components, header fabrication, and header welding. Be sure to see all of the parts in this complete video series. Hello, my name is Chris Depp with Stainless Headers Manufacturing. Welcome to the video series, Custom Header Fabrication. Stainless Headers Manufacturing is a premier builder of high-end custom headers, but a large part of our business is supplying fabrication shops and individuals with header components. I would like to take this opportunity to share some of our company's header fabrication experience. In this video series, we're going to cover all aspects of header fabrication, from general design and material selection to time-tested fabrication techniques and welding. Whether you're an experienced fabricator with a complete shop or a weekend builder, we think you'll find this information useful. These techniques are not only limited to header fabrication, but can also be applied to other areas, such as chassis work. After we cover a variety of fabrication and welding techniques, we will build a header from beginning to end. In order to effectively demonstrate how the header mock-up and fabrication process works, we're going to pull the body off this 1982 Corvette. By doing that, we'll be able to gain access and clearly demonstrate the process. So let's get started. In this video series, we're going to cover a varied list of topics. In order to accommodate a wide variety of skill levels, some techniques are basic fabrication skills and some are more advanced. Before we start the actual header fabrication process, I'd like to cover a few preliminary topics, such as material selection, mandrel bend quality, flange options, and header and collector design. Most of these preliminary topics will be covered in much greater detail later on in this video series. Let's start with material type, mild steel. Its advantages are, it's readily available, it's easy to work with, it's relatively inexpensive. Its disadvantages are, it has a limited life expectancy, but with ceramic coating showing up on the scene a few years ago, this has greatly extended its life. When it comes to stainless steel, there are many different types. Some are better suited for header applications than others. Let's start off with 409 stainless. 409 is a lower chromium and nickel content stainless, typically used in OEM application. Because of its lower chromium and nickel content, it's less expensive, but it can develop surface rust not preferred for stainless header fabrication. 304 stainless is one of the preferred materials for general header fabrication. It possesses a high resistance to corrosion and is easy to fabricate. 321 stainless is typically only used for high heat applications such as turbo systems. This type of stainless works well for normally aspirated applications, but due to its additional cost, it's limited to specific uses. Now let's talk about header bends. First off, let's talk about bend quality. Typical exhaust bends at most auto parts are considerably different than header mandrel bends. Mandrel bends are bent using a mandrel that is drawn through the inside during the bending process. This helps the bend retain its dimensional integrity throughout the radius of the bend. This is important from a performance aspect, but it also helps when joining two cut bends together for matching them up during welding. Other things to look for in a quality bend are minimal die marks. Some die marks are unavoidable but excessive marks produce a poor end product. When it comes to wall thickness, 065 wall or 16 gauge is the preferred wall thickness for headers. There are a vast number of variables that affect header design, such as RPM, bore, stroke, cubic inch, port size, compression ratio, peak horsepower, peak torque, valve lift and duration, and a variety of other factors. Since this is a topic that deserves a great bit of consideration, we have a list of sources on our website that will assist you in the technical design of your specific header application. These sources include links to software programs that will do the calculations for you, formulas for doing your own design, articles and publications that will address these issues specifically. Collector configuration is another consideration. The two most common configurations are the form collectors and merge collectors. Form collectors. They're the most common and least expensive. They offer an effective way to economically build a set of headers. They're typically offered in a limited number of secondary sizes and requiring more effort on the part of the header builder to complete the header fabrication process. Available are these collector stars that speed up fabrication time. Once the four primary tubes are tacked into place, this star is then finished welded into the four tubes like this. Also available are these collector spikes. Once the four tubes are tacked together, the spike is put into place and then welded. These collector spikes increase the velocity of the exhaust by reducing the turbulence during exhaust transition from header tube to collector secondary chamber. 
Later in this video, we will show how these items are incorporated and welded into the final product. Merge collectors. They increase performance by using the Venturi effect. By increasing the exhaust flow in the reduced area of the collector and then expanding it as it exits, it creates a low pressure area. This low pressure creates a siphoning effect that helps scavenge the exhaust. Since this type of collector is typically handmade, one at a time, the collector parameters can be made to order. The secondary can be sized to virtually any size or length. The primary tubes are also offered in a variety of different merge angles. The internal merging of the primary tubes and the collector spike are hand blended to give a smooth transition for optimal flow. Another advantage of a slip-on collector is the capability to add primary tube double slips. These double slips reduce exhaust leakage caused by increased back pressures found in turbo systems. The way they work is they slide over the primary tube inlet on the collector. Let's just say that this was the tube coming down from the flange of the primary tube of the header. It would slide into the collector inlet and the double slip bell would slide over top of that and then get welded around here. This makes an easy, inexpensive, and effective way to reduce exhaust leakage. As you can see, there are quite a few factors to consider when designing a set of headers. Make sure you visit us at stainlessheaders.com for a long list of header design resources. Now let's get started on the building process. Make sure you see us at stainlessheaders.com for all of your header component needs. We carry a complete line of header flanges, mandrel bends, merge collectors, and stainless header tubing. Oh,